Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Even though the city of Lafia is very close to our operational base, every movement of any genuine messenger of God must be by leading of God. There was such a life that Jesus lived whereby his daily actions were fulfillment of prophecies that were foretold long time by the prophets that came before him. We are here today because there is a leading in that regard, that the time for the covering cast over natural state to be overpassed has come. So the attempts that were made previously to dethrone the darkness in this territory that failed will work now. There's a mighty shift that is coming and the shift will be so intense that evidence of this shift will affect the government of this land. The season of change has come. Meanwhile, my utterances are not casual. With time, it will be evident that they are not casual. There is no profit entering a territory before Jesus opens it up. When Jesus opens it up, then you have no choice. You have to begin to go in and out because Jesus is there already. Thank you for being steadfast. You are my doctor. That's my doctor. <laughs> for being committed, for being devoted, for being consistent, mobilizing men and women to create the highway for that which Jesus wants to do. The Lord increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. So there is an emphasis right now on Nazareth State and it will soon be clear the things of which we speak. Lord Jesus, we give you glory. We thank you for the salvation of our souls. We thank you for the opportunity to partake in the blessedness of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the great mercy that you bestowed upon us to serve your will, to understand your heart cry and to run with your spirit. Tonight we stand in the city of Lafia in the congregation of your people and we plead with you O God that it might please you to stretch forth your hand and show us a sign that the time for which we waited so long is upon us. Show us a sign tonight. And let your mighty grace be made manifest. Let your glory be revealed and let the least among our numbers become as strong as David. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please make somebody welcome as you sit. Uh, those of you that are outside in the overflow, you are very much a part of this meeting. And the old miracle will meet you right there where you are sitting in Jesus mighty name. I salute all the ministers of the gospel 
that have been holding the ground in Nazarawa State, contending with witchcraft, contending to secure the open door, your labor of love will not be forgotten in the name of Jesus Christ. If you came with your Bible, turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, beginning from verse number 31. Luke chapter 4, beginning from verse number 31. Uh, Pastor Nangba, you carry out an investigation on the capacity of the, the stadium. What's the capacity? 15,000. Okay, so the next time we are coming here, we will be in the stadium. Now, this visit is a salutation. I just came to greet the brethren in the land of Nazareth State. Our real coming will be on the, uh, on the crusade rally where we speak to spirits, who speak to the atmosphere, who speak to the weather before we speak to men. Okay, come with me to the book of Luke chapter 4. We'll start our reading from verse number 31. Hallelujah. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished as this doctrine for his word was with power. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy one of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and with power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. Hallelujah. What happened here is that a, a new kind of minister came into the terrain of Capernaum. It was obvious that he had competencies that the ministers that were domiciled in the locality did not have. His style of ministration generated serious amazement. And there was a commentary that analyzed his type of service delivery in the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 36. Luke chapter 4, verse 36. This was the comment of the people. Are you there? This was the comment of the people. And you must understand that the synagogue that he came to minister was existing. There were so many ministers that were serving in that synagogue. And the man that became a victim of the capacity that was upon the life of Jesus was a member of that synagogue. And the man never manifested any trait that suggested that he was demonized. 
Even his wife did not know that there were demons locking in him. And on this fateful day, when he came to the service, Jesus was operating with the aid of a spiritual utensil that the Pharisees and the scribes did not have. The utensil that Jesus released that occasioned, it occasioned a manifestation in the life of a man that was seemingly normal. There was nothing that suggested that this man needed any form of help whatsoever. He never displayed psychiatric tendencies before this time. And when Jesus introduced the utensil called power, power had the ability to disclose several things that could not be discerned through the meticulous analysis of a psychiatric doctor. And I say this with respect to all the training and the learning that you people subject yourselves in order for you to qualify to provide help in such cases. This was the analysis. This was the feedback that came from the congregation. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying, what a word is this? Or what a message is this? When the guys were saying, what a message is this? I was expecting thereafter the highlights of the message that Jesus preached to be documented in the scripture. What a message is this? I was expecting, okay, maybe he preached on salvation. They will now tell us the message. Maybe he preached on faith. They will now tell us the message he preached for which they were amazed. But if you check your scripture, you will discover that the highlight of what he preached was not the observation in the message that these guys were talking about. The observation in the message that these guys were talking about were the two utensils that he used to dispense the message of the kingdom. And the two utensils in this case was what? Authority and power. What a message is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. Are you there? Now, the purpose of this conference is to, is to equip you. It's to give you some tools that will help you as you labor in the territory to bring the glory of God down. Are you there? All right. So, because of the nature of the equipment that we are trusting God that we come to you, it's apostolic equipment. So, there is a theoretical aspect of the equipment. Then there is a practical aspect of the equipment. Now, tomorrow evening, we will now pray for the sick and all of that. But today and tomorrow morning is for equipment. <laughs> so, if you have the lame, if you have the blind, if you have paralyzed people, tomorrow evening will be the best time to bring them. All right? However, we are doing equipment. It was obvious that in the ministry of Jesus, he had capacities that the Sadducees and the Pharisees did not have. And that was the reason why the congregation was amazed. There was a dimension of equipment. There was a dimension of manifestation. Jesus was in custody of a few utensils that aided him to register ministry at a level that the Pharisees could not. And the people discerned the utensils 
and they labeled it. That it was authority he was using and he also used power. The effect of the manifestation of authority and power is that he, he, he does something that the Pharisees never get to do. He commands on clean spirits. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You see, if you don't have this equipment, just like the sons of Sceva did not have, they commanded on clean spirits, but the spirits did not come out. The efficacy of the presence of these utensils is that when he commands the unclean spirits, they come out. And there were two utensils that he used to deliver ministry at that level, authority and power. So in an apostolic conference like this, we need to define what authority is. The proof that God has called you is authority. If you don't have authority, it means that the one that called you is ashamed of you. It means you have a problem with the one that you claim called you. It means your strategies, your style, your approach is not consistent with the approach that the one that sent you will desire that you use and as such, the, the one that sent you cannot back you up in public because your methods are contrary to his prescription. At some point, you became so wise that you did not need Jesus to dictate to you, so you came up with strategies on how to survive. He will not back up what he has not commanded. The proof that a man is in sync with God is that he has capacity to demonstrate the authority of God. One of the ways that Jesus' ministry was validated by his father was the miracles that he did. And Jesus said that the miracles he did derived from his father. So, if these two utensils are not understood, we will not be able to descend like these people because these guys were rich in discernment and their amazement was not just about the power that was upon the life of Jesus. Their amazement was also about the authority that was upon the life of Jesus. That means they were able to discern authority and they were able to differentiate it from power and they could discern power on the life of Jesus. Are you still with me? If someone goes to Satan to seek power, there is a way the manifestation of the power that has its roots from darkness, there's a way it manifests. If we discern, just like these guys did, we can know the source of your authority and the source of your power. The thing about authority and power is that it is not hidden. It is on display. And because it is on display, we can discern it. And these guys were able to discern it on the life of Jesus. And that was the reason for their amazement. They were all amazed. So the object of their amazement was not tied to the message that Jesus preached. The object of their amazement was tied to the equipment that accompanied his preaching to validate his preaching. Because... Are you, are you with me? Yes, you know, these days, especially unbelievers think that the only thing we have power to do is to talk. So we need to prove them wrong quickly. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Now, those of you outside, don't allow any distraction. Just stay with me. Now, in order for us to make this trip, I would like you to take your writing material and we are going to do a proper lecture. The lecture will be for like 25 minutes and then I will make attempt, Jesus permitting me to demonstrate authority and to demonstrate power. So we'll have the theoretical aspect 
Then we also have what? A practical aspect. I studied in the sciences. I also partook in education in the sciences. I educated people. So you are not considered to be equipped with the knowledge of science if you have not done a series of practicals. The things of God are such that human words are limited in explaining their reality. Are you with me? All right, so do this for me. You take your jota, you draw a column like that, and you name one power, then you name the other one authority. Because there are two utensils that Jesus functioned with, which was an object of amazement. It means that in the preaching of the gospel, there is supposed to be amazement uh, that results as an accompaniment of the manifestation of the power of God and the authority of God. Even if someone that is not interested in our faith sees the power of God, it has the same effect upon him, he is going to become amazed. Because what you are doing is beyond logic, is beyond philosophy, is beyond an argument. And our generation is full of arguments, full of philosophy. But what our generation lacks is the ability to make people amazed by the utensils of the kingdom of God. If we are going to go past the argument to make real impact in our time, we will need to employ the same utensils that Jesus employed to make a mark in his day. Are you still with me? If you are still here, say amen. amen. All right. I need to show you one scripture that gives us a definition of power. I'll show you another scripture that gives us a definition of authority. Then we'll, began, we'll begin to compare and to contrast power from authority. I will do this for 25 minutes. Anywhere we stop, I will stop so that we can do the practical. Before we go into the practical, we'll ask Jesus if he wants it. So if Jesus now says yes, then we'll proceed for the practical. Sometimes he doesn't, doesn't want it. My last conference that I preached, there was so much power there, he said, I should not pray for the sick. I don't know why, but I obeyed him. And uh, sometimes you even want to ask, if you didn't want me to operate power, why did you release it? It's a test to know whether your objective is to be a showman. We obey Jesus. All right? We obey Jesus. So we'll take some minutes to pray, find his mind, and then when we secure his mind that, okay, yes, that's what I'm doing, then we'll, we'll go on with that. Okay? I just wanted you to know that. All right, let us do um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. I need to define to us what power is, the place of power. All right, the Bible says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Those of you that have been to the science class, maybe at the secondary school level or the university level or the polytechnic level, anytime you are in the, you are in the biological science class and the diagram is drawn, and the reason for the diagram is to give you a pictorial concept of the things that you have been taught so that you can know it in detail. Sometimes it is easy for you to learn when you see the reality of the things into which you have been instructed. So you cannot lecture biological science, for instance, without um, illustrating several concepts and several things through the aid of a diagram. It happens to be that in the kingdom of God, 
the utensil that is used to illustrate kingdom things is not words. Words are weak to do that. Power is the vehicle through which kingdom things can be illustrated. So it doesn't matter how much of lingo we use to describe supernatural things, that will not make for an understanding of those things if power does not come to illustrate it. So what I'm saying is that kingdom realities, the things that are obtainable in the realm of God can be illustrated. They can be put on display so that no one is in doubt whether or not the kingdom of God is present. Jesus said, if I by the finger of God cast out devils, then it is an indication of the fact that the kingdom of God is among you. All right, so his ability to cast out devils by the finger of God is much more than any form of explanation on the subject of demonology that anyone can come up with. As much as we are theologians and we respect, you know, the accurate dispensing of the philosophy of our faith, Jesus is saying that there is a limitation when the finger of God is not present to cast out devils. All right, so the, one of the utensils, the, key, the power is a utensil that is used to illustrate kingdom reality. Because the kingdom of God is not in word. That's not where its reality is captured. Its reality is captured in power. And I don't have time to show you how that everything in the kingdom of God is shaped by power. Everything. I don't have time for that now. Because this is a, a theory and a practical lecture. If it was all theory, we will go into scriptures and I will show you the thrones that are in the heavenlies. When Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven, I will tell you the meaning. Because that kingdom does not, is, the language of that kingdom is power. So anytime the kingdom is made manifest, the only utensil that can illustrate that indeed it is the kingdom of God is that there is a power manifestation. God speaks by power. The first time Words were used in the Bible was not for communication, but for creation. It was an act of power. Are you there? In the book of Genesis chapter, I would have taken you through the scriptures, but we don't have time. In the book of Genesis chapter 8, you will begin to see that um, Noah began to intercede. He set up an altar took clean beasts from the ark that were preserved and he sacrificed unto God. After sacrifices unto, sacrificing unto God, God decided to respond to him. And the response, that's the first time in the Bible that it was said that a man set up an altar and communi communed with heaven and heaven responded. Are you there? So when God responded, God's response was not vocal God's response was in his heart. So Noah had an additional challenge. The challenge was to hack into God's heart to find the response. That's for another day. Now, God said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold, and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not see. What's the meaning of that? Let me, let me explain to you what it means. If you check the creatures that Noah sacrificed, he sacrificed clean creatures. Clean creatures were the creatures that were not affected by the fall. They maintain their operational manual even after the fall. Mosquito was supposed to be taking juice from the nectar of flowers, but after the fall, it takes blood. See, 
Manual is lost. It's blood now. Are you there? We were supposed to be God's representatives upon the face of the earth. Fashioned in the image of God to represent God and to have authority to fulfill the dominion mandate. When the fall came, we became an enemy of God and we carried the image of the devil. But there were several animals that were not affected by the fall. And the lexicon of animals that were not affected by the fall, which eventually came through the day of Moses, Noah had access to that lexicon even before Moses had come. And I don't want us to go into that. So he knew what creature was clean and unclean. And it's only the clean ones he sacrificed. So in his intercession, what he was saying was that God, I don't know what you did to these animals that the fall did not affect them. So I'm sacrificing them. So that you can, you can create an atmosphere for a predictable future. God's response was as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. What's the meaning of that? God decided to put some of his power in principles. Are you there? Those variables that were mentioned in that scripture, one of them is seed time and harvest. He's saying that if you use your seed time very well, your harvest will not be in doubt. Oh, you're not following me. Let's leave that, let's leave that. All right, so some of God's power were held up in the principles that govern this our realm. If you understand those principles and you align with them, you see, it's too late for you to say you want to fight against gravity. It's too late. Because if you jump up, even with muscles, you will come down. You can fly by engaging the law of lift. You, are only fly, you cannot be permanently up there. You only fly as long as the fuel is burning and the engines that are tethered to the principles of lift are active. At the end of the day, you are coming down because of gravity. Now, it is, it is not wise for you when there is serious cold and then you open your chest and say, you are a strong man. You will need antibiotics. It means you are trying to walk against the weather. <laughs> oh my God. You are trying to walk against nature. So there are several principles that God put his power in. If you know those principles and you align with them, those principles will work for you. You get that? That's also power. I don't have time to take you through the, all the shades and colors of power. Some of you are very prayerful, but you, you violate scriptural principles. And unknown to you, the power of God is anchored upon those principles. For instance, if I give and I continue giving, <laughs> my life will break forth in the area of prosperity. What we are talking about is not the amount I'm giving, the quantity. You may not even have so much, but if you make giving a point of duty, as I have done, you will realize that you will begin to increase what comes to you over time. If you give consistently for 10 years, 8 years, you will begin to see what I'm talking about. What you have done is that you aligned yourself with a principle that God's power protects. So as you align with it, God's power will ensure that that principle is efficacious in your life. The kingdom of God is designed to function by power. And power is the only utensil that we can use to adequately illustrate kingdom things. So that's my scripture for power. First Corinthians chapter 15 will be a good scripture for authority. 
But I'm not going to read that. You can just write it, 1 Corinthians 15, 22 to 25. So when you come under the column of power, number one, power is gift-based. You receive power. Are you there? Power is what? Gift-based. You must understand that. Give me Luke chapter 10 verse 19 quickly on the board. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 on the board. Who is on the board? Okay. It said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So in this scripture, we see an insurance policy. And the insurance policy that is attached to this scripture is that when you tread upon serpents, you tread upon scorpions, nothing will hurt you. So that means it's supposed to be exciting for us to look for scorpions and serpents to tread upon <laughs> because of the insurance policy. But see, before you can tread upon serpents and scorpions, you need to have received power. When we come for the lecture in the morning, I am going to explain what the metaphor serpent means, what the metaphor scorpion means, and what Jesus meant by all power of the enemy. Because serpents are, represent one aspect of the power of the enemy. Scorpions represent another aspect of the power of the enemy. Why did he now say, after mentioning serpents and scorpions, he now say, all power of the enemy. There is one he did not mention. He did not mention one. So we are going to look at serpents. We'll look at scorpions. If we have time, then we'll now look at it, these are coded languages. We'll now look at it if we have the time. So that will be what our lecture for tomorrow is about. The cure for serpents is power. The cure for scorpions is power. As we will see, you will realize that Nazareth is the house of scorpions. But I know you are not aware, but when we check it... <laughs> If you want to do ministry in the house of scorpions, I respect your theological training, but you are going to become impotent at some point because defeating the scorpion is a game of power. And the effort, I'm a theologian, so don't say, okay, it's because, no, I have, I have been. The effort that is put in place to ensure that you become a competent theologian that has the capacity to rightly divide the concepts of the word of God, that effort, which is a very powerful one, is not this, the kind of effort you will need to become a custodian of power. So at best, you are limited in the land of scorpions. And Jesus said, I'm giving you power so that you can tread upon serpents. I'm giving you power so that you can tread upon scorpions. I'm giving you power so that you can tread upon all the power of the enemy. Few things we can note in this scripture. Serpents are realities. Scorpions are realities. Second thing we can notice in this scripture is that Jesus acknowledges that Satan has power. You know, hallelujah. You are not following me. Jesus acknowledges that Satan has power. You will start on the wrong foot where you think that Satan does not have power. You will not prepare very well for the journey because you are ignorant of the fact that Satan has a capacity that Jesus himself acknowledges. I know the pastor in my city, he, was, he wanted to welcome a senior pastor to come and preach and he said, 
Do you know that Satan is a fool? In the expanse of the Bible, you will never see one portion where it is written that and Satan is a fool. <laughs> what that boastful presentation did to that servant of God was that he now began to underestimate Satan after that bold declaration. And I am a witness in that city how Satan has humbled. At this time that I'm speaking to you, he has been humbled by Satan. He never saw Satan with his eyes, but Satan walked through the wind, he walked through human beings, walked through circumstances, walked through situations, and as wise as he was, having acknowledged that Satan is a fool, Satan had put him on the reserve bench right before our eyes. <laughs> are, you, are you there? Now, Jesus acknowledges that Satan has power. But the thing about this scripture is that there are different kinds of power, but the power that derives from the kingdom of God can overcome. The power that derives from the kingdom of darkness. And I need to show you some examples. The illustrations that I need to show you are not theoretical ones because there is no way you can understand how the power of God is superior to the power of the devil if you don't see it on display. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Okay. So, power is give base. We also have Acts chapter 1 verse 8. When Jesus said, ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Are you still there? Okay. So move over to the other side on authority. Authority is not gift-based. All right. So this is five minutes past seven. Uh, there's one guy that used to play the keyboard here. Come, come and sit on it. You know, we need to change the anointing in the room in order for us to do the practicals. Um, I think I need to do some explanation. When I met with Jesus at some point, he, he told me how to move from the office of a teacher to the office of a prophet. All right, so because of that, no, wait. Don't play. Just sit down and be praying. Okay? All right, be praying. I will tell you when to play. Okay? <laughs> All right, so Jesus gave me a few tips in my training under him. Um, it's easier for you to access power when you enter into the prophetic space. That's a lecture for another day. All right, so, second point. Um, authority is not gift-based. Authority is relationship-based. Now, we have so many people in the labor of the gospel that have no relationship with Jesus. You have not invested your life to build a relationship with Jesus. Uh, unfortunately for you, you will have no endorsement from Jesus. The average preacher is trying to prove to the other preacher that he's not failing. The average preacher is trying to prove that I have something. I just packed, I have two cars packed in my, in my car stand. Just came back from Europe. Got the second master's degree. He's trying to prove that he's not failing instead of him to labor to have a relationship with Jesus. In this generation of quick success, in this generation that no longer acknowledges process, we, I fear that we are going to be men that have no endorsement from Jesus. 
And I tell you as a man that has found mercy in the sight of God, such mercy that is not very common. And God in heaven knows that what I say is the truth and it's not a boastful statement. And I can tell you that for you to receive Jesus' endorsement, you will need to invest in your relationship with him. Well, I think I, you got my advice. Give me Mark chapter 3 verse 14 so that I can show you that authority is relationship based. And he ordained 12. What was the reason for their ordination? Number one, that they should be with him. The reason for which he ordained them was so that they could separate from every other thing and be with him. In order for you to become a great person, a great functionary in the kingdom of God, you will need to know what it means to follow Jesus by his spirit. In order for you to become someone that Jesus has made, you will need to follow him. And following Jesus means to listen to the words of his spirit and consider them foolish enough to be obeyed. Consider yourself foolish enough to obey those things you hear Jesus lead you to do. The Bible says he ordained the twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. So the aspect of sending them forth to preach is the aspect of representing Jesus. That is the aspect for which they need authority. Check the scripture again. You will see what is permanent is their being with Jesus. What is a probability is whether or not he sends them to preach. So being with him is a permanent vocation. Being sent to preach is a might, it's a probability. But we, we preach permanently and uh, whether or not we are going to be with him is a probability. And you want to carry God's authority. <laughs> you, are, you are joking. Meanwhile, rebellious pastors in Nigeria are safe. Because the intensity of darkness here is not high. Don't go to Tanzania. You will not come back. It, 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 oh my, you are laughing. You are laughing. You are laughing. Now, the intensity of darkness here is, so Satan, the, the, the darkness is not so intense. So even rebellious pastors can live, can live up to 70, can live up to 80. When you start doing real business, you will know that rebellion will cut off your lifespan. There's a, there's a river, if you start swimming there. You know that you cannot even joke with your friendship with Jesus. Your life will depend on it. See, he ordained the 12 that there might be with him. That there should be with him that he might. Please, can you analyze these terminologies here? We have should, that's me, that's the job. What price have you paid so that you'll be in touch with Jesus? Let me give you an idea of your compliance. When last were you led to give somebody money? You were led. That will give, it will give you a picture of how close you are to Jesus. Everyone that is close to Jesus... Jesus will make you generous. Generosity is one of the evidences of godliness. 
I don't have time. I don't have time today. It is very possible for you to be doing pseudo false spirituality and even people that you preach to cannot discern it. When you stay long with Jesus, he will make you like himself. You know the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. That's God's nature. If you start adopting, if you start experiencing transformation, you will be like that. You know, now everything you do is for self. You want to be seen as a guy doing it. So even if you want to give somebody something, you say, okay, they should video it. You say, okay, this 50,000 I'm giving you for, it's all messed up. Because he has not been with Jesus. He doesn't know how Jesus operates. If Jesus wants to help the less privileged, he will, he will, he will preserve the dignity of the person he wants to help. So he will not put him on Facebook. But our generation celebrates things that are outlawed, things that are illegal. We use them as yardsticks ah, of godliness because we don't, we've not been with Jesus. You will never know how many people I've helped until we go before God. You'll be amazed, I assure you. You will be amazed. If all about your life is on Facebook, then we need to check your master. It means you, you are with Facebook. You, were, you have been with Facebook. The same way. You are supposed to be with Jesus. Authority is relationship based. And so many people can lie. But Jesus is, is as intelligent as to know who desires his presence. He has as much intelligence to know those people. Don't deceive yourself. Don't swell. Grow. You, you know growth? <laughs> Most people are swelling. Swelling on Facebook, the numbers are increasing. You are swelling. They, you are, they put you inside water, so you are swelling. Wake up from that water and grow. Growth will require covenant. It will require discipline. It will require violating the flesh every day, every day, every day. Wearing out his authority. So that the spirit of God can have a place in your life. Number two. Then I'll stop. Power is noisy. Reduce your volume. I'll tell you when to increase it. Power is noisy. In the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 5 to 6. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. Stop there, stop there. So in Philip's ministry, we had the audio because they were hearing. We had video because they were seeing. If it is true that you have a power ministry, we should have audio and what? And video. If your own power is theoretical, it means you have not been with Jesus. The way we know people that have been with Jesus is that Jesus gives them something that only him can give to human beings. So that the counterfeit will not be able to lie enough. Jesus, in final analysis, Jesus knows how to separate fake people from the ones that have been Meanwhile, when you are being, when we are around Jesus, there's some point Satan will make you feel as if you are wasting. If you have never felt like that, you, are, you have not started. That as intelligent as you are, sharp guy, handsome guy, you are just here. You are just here. That's the way it is. You will waste on Jesus. It's only those that have wasted on him that he now speaks over them and say, as long as the son. Remains. 
He gives them a personal covenant that they can display on the crusade ground, even though there are 15,000 people. They think we walk because they have been with Jesus. They have been with Jesus. Power is noisy. Yeah? Next verse. They were hearing, they were seeing, for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and, and they that were lame were healed. So if you attend Philip's crusade, you will hear shout, ha, ooh, ha! It's part of Are you there? It is possible that you are so committed to order. Parara, parara, parara. That's not how Jesus' meetings were. No, that's not. Parara. How wonderful. How marvelous. Is that it? That's not it. The people were shouting in Jesus' campaigns. Hallelujah. So we, 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 talk, we thank God for your commitment to order. But if the Holy Spirit comes in, he has his own type of order. That is different from your definition of order in Webster's Dictionary. In the eyes of the Holy Spirit, there is no order if demons are troubling people. It's disrupted. People's lives are going at a tangent that is inconsistent with the ordination of God. That's not order in his eyes. So when he comes in, he will disrupt that your own kind of order and establish his own kind of order that is governed by the ideals of the Holy Ghost. People will cry. Hallelujah. I remember a woman, she cried her way into healing. I don't know what happened to her. A flame alighted on her and why she cried out, she cried her way into the deliverance. If there is power, you will have audio and what? There will be things for people to see and many more things for people to hear. If what you do is so pious and sanctimonious, you know what you have done? You kick the Holy Ghost out. And in these days, if the Holy Ghost finds as much as a crack, he will enter. Do you want him to enter? Yes, I think we've been quiet for too long. We've been subdued for too long. So we just stay and say, okay, let's not make noise because the noise, you know, hey. That's why the next time we are coming, we will not be hiding in the class like this. We have to go out to the stadium. We have something to say. Eh? We have something to say. If you still believe me, say amen. amen. So power is noisy. But authority is not. Authority rather is judicial. Judicial. Luke chapter 13, beginning from verse 11 to 16. I will stop my lecture there. Then, ooh, you see, Jesus is already coming. Raise that volume there. You are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm trying to sit down. I'm testing the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. <laughs> Jehovah, you are. Jehovah. Jehovah, oh. mm -hmm. Jehovah, yeah. Jehovah. 
Testing the microphone. All right. Let's go back to the scriptures. Authority is judicial in nature. In Luke chapter 13, beginning from verse 11, the Bible says, And behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity 18 years. And was bound together and in no wise could lift herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus has healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people there are six days in which men ought to work in them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said thou hypocrite doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound low these 18 years be loosed from this bound on the Sabbath day? So there was indignation. The ruler of the synagogue wanted to establish religious correctness. And he said there are six days in the week where men ought to walk. And in those days come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. So he, he brought that argument to the congregation. And thank God he allowed Jesus to respond. Because Jesus gave us his own response to the man's perspective, the man's logic. He said, even on the Sabbath day, there are things that are allowed. One of which is that you can take your ox from the stall and lead your ox to water it. And they all acknowledge that. You now say, can't you see that this woman is a daughter of Abraham? It means she has more status in the kingdom of God than your ox. And she's been bowed low these 18 years. Is it not the right thing for us to lose her on the Sabbath day? Are you there? So in this scripture, Jesus was operating as a law enforcement agent. He analyzed and saw the daughter of Abraham and saw that she was bound and according to the laws of God, she ought not to be bound. Because he said, ought not. Ought not this woman. What is obtainable in her life is inconsistent with what ought to be. The issue has been judged. And he ought not to be. Because of that, he functioning with authority. As a law enforcement agent now said, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. There are people in your family that ought not be bound. Many there be that ought not to have died. Satan does not pray according to the rules. He breaks the rules every time. It will take a man of authority to restore order 
when Satan comes and violates the rules. Authority is judicial. Authority is exercised to restore things to divine normalcy. It, is, it will be unfortunate in your family if there is no law enforcement agent when Satan comes to disrupt things and to violate the destinies of men and to marginalize the possibilities of the people. Ought not. Ought not this woman. Ought not this man. When you move on the streets of Lafia, you are going to see so many things that ought not to be, but they are because there is no man of authority. There are many people, many preachers, but we lack a man of authority. I provoke you today to leave the number of preachers and number among men that can change things. You are the most high God, Jehovah. You are. Hola ise liamo kumbra babokotawa. You are the most high God. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. You are the most high God. When we came from America, we flew into Lagos. If you trespass one or two time zones, by the time you come back to your destination, even though you are a strong man in the flesh, you will experience what is called jet lag. When you sleep, it's as if you are drowning. If somebody wakes you up, if there is a cot close to the house, you will take the person to court. May the Lord give you understanding. So in that state, I had a friend and he said, please, there's a problem. So I said, all right, take this direction, trace where I am. He came. Came with his son. Came with his daughter. And he told me that this is his daughter, the one he, 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 he told me about on the phone. That she was born a sickler. That means her genotype is SS. So I prayed for her a simple prayer. And asked him to go to the lab and check her status in 14 days. The test result is on my phone. I showed my wife yesterday night. It's AA now. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Calm down. I know you will do that. Clapping is cheap. Clapping is cheap. What Jesus will require from you before he puts his authority on your life, it's not cheap. When a spirit makes a demand on you, your flesh will cry out. It's not cheap. Walking with God, who you cannot see with your eyes, is not cheap. I pray you will not take the cheap road, because if you do, you will waste your, your life, you will waste your time. Went to Canon to preach. And I was looking for somebody in the congregation that could play the keyboard. We found one guy. The guy couldn't play so much, but he played enough for me to enter into the mode that I needed to be to minister. When I finished, I asked him, what do you want? He said, I'm a sickler. I touched him. I said, be healed. Go back to your doctor. He comes from a wealthy home, so he has a doctor that manages him. When they ran the test, the team moved from AA, from SS to AS. No, they didn't believe that. They ran the test again. I think God got angry and moved it to, to AA. You know, 
In Nigeria, that's cheap, but in, the, in Europe, they know that that's an act of creation. Only the one that gave us cells can do that. So right there in England, I prayed with a lady. She was a sickler, SS. And she went back to the hospital because I asked her to go test. The doctors detained her after the first test. Because how can your genotype change? It means it's not her, it's impersonation. So she's a criminal, is she, it's a criminal, criminal uh, offense. They ran the test again. She was AS. So they arrested her and claimed that she has to go to Oxford. Because Oxford is where the best minds in the medical field are. After the test in Oxford, they wrote a 26 page report full of jargons. Use medical, just to explain that they were limited. They used 26 pages. Then at the end of the 26 page, at the footnote, they wrote the condition that made her to be identified as sickle cell no longer exists. After 26, why didn't they just write that? They wrote jargons. Just, and then they said the condition. The condition is no longer. So I'm telling you about miracles that were verified in the best hospitals in the world. Sobrinda. Kevai Tombesi. Mahabrande Kuria Bambe. Doko Samalanteli. Aria Sile Mende Kuria Bababondale. Holy Ghost fire come. Oh, oh, fire. Holy Ghost fire come. <laughs> oh, fire. Holy Ghost fire burn. Everywhere. Oh, oh fire. Holy Ghost fire burn. <laughs> hey, oh fire to the soles of your feet, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, from the crown of your head to the soles, to the soles, to the. Soles, to the Now, can you sit down? Just sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. We are still in the lecture. Are you still following? You are not following. We are still in the lecture. Can you be disciplined? Hey! Hey, there is a yoke that somebody has been carrying and God is removing the yoke. He's removing it. 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 Go! 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 Just stay. The lecture is still on. Are you there? If you are sitting there, say Amen. Okay. Now, are you still here? We are not here again. Since you are not here, let me just end.
Are you here? Now, all of you stand up. Can you sit down? Sit down. I didn't ask you to stand up. Sit down. Sit down. It's only these ones I ask you to. Now, I, I want to give you people power. So the way I will do it is I will put my hand like this. Father, I ask, put your power on these choir members. Put your power on these choir members. Put your power on these choir members. Put your anointing on these choir members. Put your fire on these choir members. Put your fire on these choir members. Let it come stronger. 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 Put your fire on them. 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 Put your fire. So, hallelujah. So, this is power. I want to demonstrate authority before I sit down. If you are here and you use glasses to read or to drive, to see far, to see near, if you are here and you use glasses, rise up and stand on your feet. If you don't use glasses to read, sit down. Those of you outside, if you use glasses to read, stand on your seat where you are. I'm going to exercise authority in the name of Jesus right now. And these people, anyone whose heart is aligned will start seeing. Can you do me a favor, those of you standing, take your right hand, lay it on your eyes. Just follow my instructions. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I rebuke every blinding spirit. Blinding spirits be bound. Blinding spirits be bound. Blinding spirits be bound. Come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus. Come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus. I break your yoke in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Now I speak to those eyes. I see in the name of Jesus. Remove your hands. Run a test on your eyes. Remove your hands from your eyes. You have two minutes to run a test on your eyes now. Two minutes. If Nothing happens, say nothing. If something happens, don't keep quiet. You have two minutes. Run a test on the eyes. If you could not read, take a book, try to read. If you cannot see far, we have so many things that are far off. Test it for two minutes. Ushers, 
ushers. Are you with me? Release these ones to go back to their seat. Release them. The one that cannot go, leave them. The one that can go, let them go. The one that can go, let them go. The one that the Lord is still working on, leave that one. All right, so. So if you notice any change in your sight, inside and outside, I will take two testimonies. If you notice any change in your sight, if you don't notice any change, you can sit down. If you notice any change, come to my pastor here by my right hand side. If you notice any change in your eyesight, come to my pastor here. Nothing happened, sit down. If you notice a change in your sight, visit my pastor here. Um, Oshas, is it possible for you to... The young man needs to pray, so put him somewhere. That one too needs to pray, so take him. Two people can take him out. Two people can take him out. Two people can take him out. So that we can have. If you if you notice there's an improvement on your side, don't sit back. Come, there is an improvement on your side. Don't sit back. I am waiting for you. Now sometimes. Because of all these big lights, we need to wear a reflector. Huh? Every, almost every day I'm standing before. So we need to wear the one that can. Okay. You know, please, can you give him some sound on the microphone? If nothing happened to you, to your eye, sit down. Hallelujah. If something happened to your eyes, come out. The instruction is clear. Those of you outside, listen to me. If nothing happened to you when I prayed, sit down. If something happened to your eyes when I prayed, come to the podium. The person that God showed me that he healed, the person was even outside. So I'm waiting for that person outside. Meanwhile, yes, Papa, there is a testimony here. Now, come, let them come up to where I am. So that we can, Pastor Dan, yes, so you can take your testimony from upstage. The ones that are coming, no, if one by one, you come one by one so that we can really investigate what is happening. There is someone sitting outside in the overflow that God has healed your eyes and sent to you. So the moment you confirm it, come. Okay, what happened to him? So Mr. What's your name? Mr. Samson. Mr. Samson. For more than five years now. For more than five years now. He has been using glasses. Where are your glasses? Him. That's why his eyes can see. Do you understand that? So that's the evidence of authority. Authority is issued in form of a command. And if your authority is valid, 
the demons responsible for the situation will take their leave in high level miracle ministry what you need to pray for is that the Lord will give you authority because what is required for the miracle ministry is authority now I'm doing this as a lecture today because tomorrow evening if you have people that are crippled if you have people that are crippled that will walk tomorrow if you have people, in fact, I, I, don't worry. Let's leave the, the miracle service to till tomorrow. I'm just teaching. There is someone that God healed. Okay. You. Six wait, wait. We have not finished with. So, for how long did you use those glasses? I've used it for like five years. For like five years? I struggle very hard doing things. Like yesterday, one of my brother, who is here too, he came to my house. There was something I was supposed to do to him. I have to beg him. I said, please, you know, once the light is not bright, I find it difficult. And even there is light. When the light is, is shining, somehow it will still be difficult. <laughs> Lord, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Solomon, God bless you. Yes? Yes, sir. There's a sister here. There's a miracle here, Papa. Was she from? Outside? Yes, outside, Papa. Now, the case I saw outside, it may not be how. The case I saw outside, it was one of the eyes that was going one was going really deep. One is dim, but the other one going really deep and the person is outside. And I know that Jesus healed that person. So, is that person that I'm waiting for? Yes, sister? What's this? This is the glasses she's using. Medicated glass. For how long? More than two years. Now, so this, what's your name? Peggy. What? Peggy. Peggy. Okay, Sister Peggy has been using this for one and a half years. You have oh, been changing the glasses. You have been changing. So when did you start using glasses initially? SS3. You look like SS3 now. Where, where are you now? Where are you now? Are you, this, this is SS3 now. 200 level. How old are you? 20. Okay. Okay, I think. Uh, now, she used to use this. Did you test it before you came? I was with it throughout. You were, since morning. Since morning. So what happened when we prayed for you? I took it off and placed my hand on my eye. So after the prayer, I put it back and I started feeling pains. You started feeling pains on your eyes? Yes, sir. After the prayers, uh -huh. she put it back. She put the and she started, back. Feeling, she started pain. feeling pain. Yes. So she removed it. Yes. When you removed it, did you test the eyes? Yes, sir. Before now, I, whenever I stand under light, the reflection affects me. Oh, that's photophobia. So you were able to stand under light. There's some light here. Now, these are real miracles. And you will see many more tomorrow. This is what authority does. It displaces devils. As far as Jesus is concerned, demonic issues are a major aspect of the manipulation of the destinies of men. If you have the authority to displace devils, then you... Yes? Sister Victoria... Sister Victoria also had the same issue. Let's hear from you. Yes? Using glasses for about two years now. Using glasses. What's the condition for which you Having were prescribed blood the glasses? Si blood sightedness. Blood. 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 Oh, your eyes blurry. Blood. Yes. Your when vision. Be, yes. When I want to read, it will become blurred for some time and then before it will become clear. If I don't have my glasses with me. So did you check it before you came and it was okay? Yes, sir. It was clear? Yes, sir. Can we celebrate Jesus? Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Can you share your testimony with us? I'm waiting for the person outside. Yes? Hey, praise the Lord. I've been using glass since SS1, 2017. Since SS1? Yes. Where are you now? SS211. It so looks like SS1 to me. But we thank God for the promotion. So what happened? 
Yeah. Our hand on our eyes, I started like crying, and my eyes was feeling hot. You started crying and because your eyes were feeling hot. After the prayer, I looked at the. After the prayer, I looked at she the, looked around. Yes, and I looked at the word. If I can read it clearly without the. Glasses. So she can read clearly without the glasses. Can we give Jesus a big hand? Have you found out what's wrong with the woman? You have not found out. Now, is it possible for you to turn around and face me? So, Pastor Dan, what's wrong with them? This one says she has issue with her left ear for 16 years now. January. Since January, yours is just this year. Yours is how many years? 17 years. Yours is for how many years? Four years. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. What's happening here? Huh? Here. Yeah. Okay, so just line up straight. Line up straight. Have you found out what's wrong with the woman? Yes, what is wrong? So can, can, can she explain to us her condition? Um, let us speak in her language and then anybody that can interpret will help us with the interpretation. Now, I know you are a great man of faith, eh? but don't know, sit down, just listen. Don't try to do miracles if you have not heard him. There's nobody that knows how to do miracles. The power may even be there, but it's not willing. So when you find out that he's willing, that's when you do what I want to do now. Yes, yeah, so what is wrong For with the woman? three years, okay. she had issues with her sight. With her sight. But after the prayers, okay. now she said... She had difficulty reading her scriptures, but now she can read her. Now, Bible. Let, let wait, wait. Without Let's glasses. hear from her mouth. Let her speak. And then give us. Let her speak. I want to hear her speak. Some people believe that you are making those stories up. Glory be to God. For almost three years, I can't read a Bible. I can only use my speak. But today they gave me a book outside. Then I open it and I can read it. Now this is for three years. Lord, let this miracle be permanent in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Mommy, you are blessed. Now, so imagine what will happen if we visit one of the villages. And we tell them that we came so that the blind can see, so that the deaf can hear, so that the lame can walk. Don't you think people will come? Don't you think even our cousins will come? It's not so difficult to win them. We need miracles. You will come alone. So why are you still, don't you have someone that can hold this one for you? Okay, no problem. All right. Okay, so follow my instructions. Huh? Take this finger, any of the above, depending on the ear. Use it and block the ear that cannot hear. Block it completely. Can you give them, is it possible? I'm not in danger. So can you just stand at the back there? Now, I don't have the two ears that have problems. Is it the two ears? Okay. My instruction, you will have a miracle. So all of these people here have hearing problems. Don't disturb this lady now. She's doing a good work. Who is disturbing her? Just remind them. Remind them. So these people have hearing problems. Like I told you, authority... It's a spiritual thing that God puts on a man's spirit. He only puts it on people that are intimate with him. I know the day 
Jesus put this authority on my spirit. And the way you exercise the authority is by giving a command to a spirit being. Daphne, spirits be bound. You confirm and you can hear. Let me know. No, don't help them. Don't help them. Leave there. You don't want to do what I want. Sister, come. Come. Okay, sit down. Come. You. Conduct the test and confirm if they can hear. If they can hear, tell me. Exactly. Anyone that you have confirmed that can hear, let the person come forward. When you finish giving the command, you can even sit down. You can just sit down. This aspect, this part of it is not none of your business. Don't ever claim to be a miracle worker. Just do the one you have done. Can they hear? If they can hear, bring them forward. The ones that cannot hear, leave them. Go and sit down. First, let us hear their, their story. I'm not looking for all of you. It's one person I'm looking for. I will find that person before I sit down. Now, so, yes? These two sisters. They are sisters. They are, anyway, they are. Okay, sisters. Sisters, yes. This one has had issues with her ears, excessive noise. She'll be hearing like sound in her ears. But after the prayers, it has stopped. The same with the other sister. Go. Jeremiah had issue with his both ears. Both ears. For okay. how long? 17 years. I say now, now, let him explain to us the condition so that we can understand it. Praise God. The conditions it I most I I hardly hear it at my both ears. And I mean, when a person speaks either clearly or audibly or in a little small voice, I hardly hear. But now, even when I put my two my two hands, I, I okay, I, you can I, hear I, now. Thank you, Father. Yes. All right. Just like now. Now there's an angel that came. He came this way. This row. This row like this. If I'm saying the truth, it will be confirmed in the next 21 seconds. Father, show me that one here. Show me that one here. In 21 seconds, it will be confirmed. In 21 seconds, it will be confirmed. Show me that one here. Show me that one here. Let your hand come upon that one so that I will know the person that you are sending me to. Show me that vessel. Show me that vessel. Let your hand come strong on that vessel from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. From the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. Okay, it's catching. It's catching. It's catching stronger. It's catching stronger. Holy Ghost. 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 You see, so if you miss the moment that you are not sensitive, power doesn't belong to you. So when you are sensitive to the way God operates, you can you can deliver a miracle to you. Yes? What happened to that lady? Yes, she's still working. 
progress is not very clear. Okay. He said he, now he can hear clear. He can hear clear. Yes. Now for how many years had he had a, has he had a problem with that ear? It's like I born now with born with it. Now the person God said he sent me to is born with that condition. He said we'll give him ears today. Now see, you are not following. He, uh, miracles is not shout. Do you understand? It's not about shouting. If you shout too much, it means you are empty. Authority is something Jesus puts on your spirit. So I'm just using this as an example so that you understand what we are talking about. That ear has been deaf since birth. It starts working today. There's no medical explanation for these things other than the power of God. All right. If I touch you, you can go back. Young man, remain there. I have something for you. It is you I'm looking for. What happened to you? Um, I was having a challenge with mine. It's not you I'm looking for. So I'm looking for this young man. He sent me to this one. So if it is true, he will be able to receive what I want to give him. What I will give him will change his life. He may not even know now. We are going to pray for five minutes. Then I'll give him. When you go for a meeting, try to find out who God has sent you to. Yeah, he sends you to the entire congregation, but they are individuals. You need to be very sensitive to be able to trace. Sometimes Jesus will leave the entire crowd and focus on. Do you know the person in the crowd that Jesus sent you to? Have you ever traced any one of them? That's what proves that you are a man of God. You can know the person. God has sent it. Stretch your hand in this direction. Pray for him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we put an end to the warfare that is over the life of this young man. Just like you have given him his hearing today, restore to him things that have been stolen away from his life. Let your hand of grace rest upon him, O God. In the name of Jesus. Go. You are blessed. So why did you refuse to come? You were not hearing. But your problem is not hearing. Your problem is sight. So what happened? So what condition? Now, this glaucoma, is it on the two eyes or on, or on one? The two. The one I saw, the person, one of the eyes is worse than the other one. It's the right one that is worse. So let's pray for him. In 
the name of Jesus. When you pray for people that are sick, hear him. Don't follow your method. So for this one, give him one of these are water. Let him wash his face. There will be an improvement on his side. Go. If you want to clap, please, you can clap better than this play of authority. Be thou exalted in Jesus' precious name. We'll be leaving. Please, nobody should leave. Please be seated where you are. We'll be leaving in no moment from now. Please, ushers, can you commence the movement of the offering baskets around the hall and outside the congregation? And then, please, can we have, yes, we have on the screen the account number. There's a dollar account number. There's an era account number. And there's a local account number. So you can take advantage of the account number to give your offering to give your tithe or any special seed that God is placing in your hand to give. Hallelujah. This meeting, as you heard from our Papa, we continue tomorrow morning by 8 a.m. and the venue is this place. Can we celebrate Jesus? Can we celebrate Jesus? That one is Jara. If I was